Before any mixes are made, here's an essential checklist that can save you time and money. Do not attempt an installation if rain is forecast during or within four hours of completion. It's time for a weather app on your phone. Is the ground surface wet? An outdoor hydrometer to test for humidity is very useful. It can tell you if the surface temperature is at least 3 degrees higher than the dew point temperature and if the humidity level is below 80%. If it is, it's okay, but any higher and there is a chance of moisture or rain in the air. Be prepared to delay the project. Make sure the surface has been primed and is dry. Check your materials for quantity, batch, color and to re-measure the area to be sure you have all you need to complete the project. Make sure all your equipment is ready and clean for use and that the area has been prepared with all cracks repaired and edging protected with tape to avoid resin staining. If everything is looking positive, then you can begin installation. The process of mixing and laying is simple but requires accuracy at every stage. There aren't any shortcuts. We recommend that you begin by sorting the dried aggregate into batches. And please remember that stone is a natural product, so bags of aggregates from each pallet should be mixed to guarantee consistency. The formula for mixing resin with dried aggregates has been carefully designed and it is so important that the specified blend is not varied. To achieve an optimum strength surface, a resin-bound installation should consist of UV stable resin and hardener 7.5 kilograms a blend of 75% 2 to 5 mm dried aggregate and 25% 1 to 3 mm stone that's four bags in total one bag of 6.25 kilograms of C52 sand fine crushed glass to broadcast on the surface to provide slip resistance when laying a resin driveway, your installation team should consist of at least three people. These are the mixer, the looter, the troweler. Each has a series of key roles and responsibilities to ensure the work is completed safely, effectively and without wasting any time or money. The mixer is responsible for the following. Stage 1. Place one 25 kilogram bag of two to five millimeter stone and one 25 kilogram bag of one to three millimeter stone into the mixer. Stage two, add the pre-mixed resin. Now is the time to start the stopwatch. Stage three, add the two remaining 25 kilogram bags of two to five millimeter stone. Stage four, slowly add the bag of C52 sand. Stages two to four must be mixed for the same duration during every mix. Failure to do this will cause colour variation in the mix. We strongly recommend you use a stopwatch when mixing. Once the sand has been added, make sure it has been distributed evenly throughout the mix. When ready, empty the mix into your aligned barrel. Switch the mixer off, then ensure all mix is scraped out of the mixer, taking special care to remove it from the blaze and from the door opening. The force action mixer needs to be cleaned down after each mix. This avoids the buildup of resin and lengthy cleaning of cured resin at the end of each day. It also avoids contamination and clumping. Any residue from previous mixers could end up in a new mix causing problems for the troweler. The mixer should be wiped round with white spirit to remove all residue. The mixer should also check that everything is in good order and the blades are not worn, ideally after every mix. Excessive wear means uneven mixing. Lightly spray the inside of the mixer with WD-40 when clean. This will stop the resin sticking so much to the mixer. There are a few important things to remember. Do not use aggregates that are damp in the bags. Insufficient mixing time in the mixer can lead to uncoated material. Each mix must be mixed for exactly the same amount of time to avoid variations in colour. For each batch, make sure the correct blend of aggregates is used. Keep aggregates in the shade if necessary. If they heat up, they will decrease the curing time of the resin. Laying a resin-bound surface on tarmac on a hot day will also decrease the curing time of the resin. Start the job early if it looks like it's going to be hot. 
the looter takes the mix to the troweler and tips manageable quantities of the material, ensuring the mix is spread as evenly as possible. This is important as too much material means more troweling and working on the mix. Most importantly, the looter needs to look at the surface that has been previously troweled and check for trowel marks and inconsistencies from every possible angle. Any marks or anomalies can be easily rectified at this stage before the mix is cured. The troweler's job is to plan the laying route and grid the area out in squares with chalk. The troweler also lays the battens in place to indicate where the looter is to tip the mix. Once the looter has leveled the mix, the troweler begins laying. A screed bar may be used prior to troweling. It's important the trowel is cleaned with white spirit before starting and also regularly throughout troweling. About every six strokes, a dirty trowel becomes increasingly sticky and will drag aggregate out of place. Take care when cleaning the trowel. White spirit will mark the surface. To avoid spillage, always clean in a direction away from yourself and the area you are troweling. Tidy edges make a real difference to the finished result. Start by leveling and packing aggregate up close to every edge to ensure there are no gaps. The troweler needs to knit the mix together, making sure the aggregates form a closely compacted level surface. The trowel should be used with the edge slightly raised away from the stroke. Keep a consistent, light but firm pressure. This will prevent the trowel digging into the mix. The mix should be troweled until the aggregates stop moving in a fluid movement and become solid. All this needs to be done in as few strokes as possible. A quick way to check it is level is to lay your trowel on the surface. This will show up any unwanted undulations. Finally, the surface is smoothed and given a final sheen or polish. The final stroke of the polish must always be in the same direction so that a uniform and consistent shine is achieved across the whole area. To test the mix is knitted and is compact, cut a section into the edge of the surface being troweled. It should remain intact. This is also a good way to check that you are troweling to the required depth consistently. Finally, remember to always leave the leading wet edge a little rough and unworked so that the next batch of aggregate can be seamlessly and easily blended into it. A light, even sprinkling of glass provides additional anti-slip qualities which we recommend for all installations. Once the job is finished, the area needs to be clearly marked out with cones and warning tape to help prevent people walking on the surface. It is a good idea to take a photo of the cones and tape in place to show your customers. Derbyshire Specialist Aggregates runs a resin-bound training course. This video introduces some areas covered on the course. For more details, visit resinbondedaggregates.com or phone or email us.